I'm not arrogant enough to say, I know this thing in and out enough. Like there's a zero. It's like, yes, there's risk, but okay. Yeah, yeah. The, we know, what do we know? We, we, there might be risk we don't know about, but what do we know? We know that the risk is very low. We know that it survived 14 years with no oversight, no management and a very high financial incentive to destroy with every incentive from the uh, Chinese communist party to destroy every incentive from the U S government to destroy. Nobody's been able to kill it. Nobody, the Taliban's tried to censor. It. It's like nobody has succeeded. And this thing is tiny. And we know as it gets bigger, it becomes more secure. Just, just for technical reasons, we can't get into now. It's like, we know that, that Bitcoin has a very high chance of success. Okay. What else do we know? We know that the U S dollar has to die that the peso has to die, that the yen has to, we know they have to die. It's like, it, it's, it's so funny. You know, it's like people look at Bitcoin. Oh, it might die. It might die. It might die. It's like, yeah, sure. Maybe there's a 10% chance it dies. Shoot. Give it a 90% chance. Bitcoin dies. There's a 99% chance that the U S dollar is going to die. 99.5% chance. It's like by the feds own emission, by the U S Treasury's own emission, by every, Everyone knows we have to make more money. We have to borrow more debt. We know that we can't cover our interest payments with our, our tax. But it's like, we know it's a Ponzi. We know it's dying. It's like, if there's a 1% chance that the U.S. dollar survives another 500 years, it's like, all Bitcoin has to do is be better. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be better for you to justify an allocation to it. And so that's what that, I, I guess that's the best way to um, end it here is that, yeah, sure, there's unknowns and there's new things and there's things we don't know, but... I would argue there's a very high chance Bitcoin could survive a thousand years and an even higher chance it could survive the next hundred years and even higher chance it's going to survive the next 10 years. And, you know, it, it, when it's the precise opposite for the U.S. dollar, I think there's a high chance, um, you know. So anyway, all that to say is that when it comes to risk, I, I'm afraid people are perceiving risk the entirely wrong way. And the view of Bitcoin is a get rich quick, uh, low time preference option. And my, my warning to people is that I'm a very low risk person, uh, generally speaking, and I, I buy Bitcoin not because I'm trying to increase the risk. I, I buy Bitcoin to decrease my risk. I buy Bitcoin so I can get out of the FDIC and out of the depository institution and out of the UST, uh, US Treasury. I'm trying to decrease my risk by buying Bitcoin. And most people think it's the opposite. And I'm afraid once people realize that this is the case, that that's when we get a major um, crisis, frankly. What happens, again, let's go back to the millionaire example. What happens when one in 30 millionaires say, you know, I think I've been wrong about this Bitcoin thing. I think it's a risk off an opportunity and I want to allocate 2% just so I can protect myself, just so I can protect. Okay. That 2% from that very small group of people, that's all the Bitcoins. Okay. What if they do that? And then the U S government realize, well, shoot, this, this thing is, is an important power projection tool for, you know, the Space Force or the Pentagon. We got to print $100 billion right now and buy all the, so, well, sir, there's none left. It's like, what do you mean there's none left? I mean, you know, it's just, it's horrible game. It's devastating game theory here that Bitcoin is lower risk than the current system. And the only logical conclusion is to de-risk and get some allocation to the new system. But in doing that, you increase the risk in the old system, decrease the risk in the new system and you have a greater incentive. It's, it's like the way I put it is that Bitcoin is basically an insurance policy on a house that's already burning down. And every time you buy that insurance policy, you're pouring more gasoline onto the house. And oh, by the way, the insurance policy is undervalued by a factor of a hundred. It's like, it, it's the most obvious thing that I, I can think of um, just with, with the way that the world's unfolding right now. And I'm terrified that in the next five years or so, people are gonna start to wake up and they're gonna realize I'm not sure about Bitcoin, but I need 1% just in case the house might burn down in the future. And then as soon as they buy the insurance policy, they realize, wait, I just poured gasoline on the house. Oh, wait, it is on fire. Oh, wait, it's almost burnt. It, it's just, anyway, it, it's, um, it's never too late to get into the new monetary system of humanity. By, I mean, that's the beauty of Bitcoin. It's going to bring so much prosperity for people. It's going to be a wonderful thing. I believe that's my next thread, actually, that Bitcoin is going to save hundreds of millions of lives. Um, and, and it's just amazing the potential prosperity Bitcoin can bring for humanity. But the unfortunate reality is that the old system, by definition, has to die. Just like every technological paradigm before us today, that new system inherently destroys the old system. You know, Internet destroys radio. Um, you know, printing press destroys 
you know, the tablet, um, you know, the light bulb destroys the candle. And it's like in the same way, Bitcoin destroys banking. It destroys fiat political currency. Units. It destroys a divers diversified investment portfolio and open monetary system. It's like Bitcoin destroys so much. It's a huge threat. It's undervalued dramatically. And even if Bitcoin has a 1% chance of survivability, it's, it should be trading much higher than it is today. And I'm terrified that it's more like 90%, not 1%. So, yeah. <laughs>